Hello, Amiga coders. This is Photonopscopic Scan. I thought we'd knock our um, star field effect into shape. So first off, the random positions. So this is what I came up came up with just by changing some values. Um, this starting value I've started as an odd number and then for each star I increase it by an even number to keep the number odd all, all the time uh, and I add a different number to it for each sprite so the same thinking goes through uh, the other variables here so when we calculate the temporary exposition um, then I multiply by different values each time and also I shift this um, this 32-bit uh, add before I divide. I'm sure there's somebody who has a really simple formula for pseudo-random um, calculations that are good enough for a star field. Um, but yeah, uh, the division is there to jumble up the values with uh, this shifting and masking going on um, the uh, position will be pseudo-random enough I think. Uh, so this is how it looks so that's definitely better I think uh, at least I don't see any obvious patterns like we had before. Uh, we still have the problem of uh, the stars stopping uh, above the horizon. So uh, to address that, we can fix that first. Um, oh. So what this means is this is executed 63 times, 64 times, sorry. Uh, again, late at night coding. Um, and we do a little bit too much here. We both set the vertical position, which will not change uh, between frames. And uh, the only necessary thing to do is is to move, move the star each frame. Um, so we're going to clean that up, but we want to set these um, these uh, these bits in the last uh, byte of the control or control words. So um, this is a binary value. So these these are eight bits, and this is the attach bit, and this is the start and end uh, ninth bit high order bit. On AGA you have more bits uh, for more position and so on. Um, and finally here is the um, horizontal uh, odd or even value, bit zero of, of, of the exposition. So I think we'll not mess around with, with this bit, but uh, we want the stars to continue below the horizon. So Why not make a bookmark there and make a bookmark here. So um, what happens here then? Well, we do this 64 times 4, right? So we should get 256 sprites out of such a loop. But, um, and we could add some, co well, more complex checking and shifting and stuff inside the, the loop uh, to check if we have passed uh, raster line hex FF. But it's a little bit overkill. We can calculate how many sprites fit between raster line 2C and uh, from raster line 2C to raster line hex FF. Um, so like this. This is how many we should have. Is that divisible by 4? It might not be. Uh, hang on. I have to peek over the mic. 
Um, it is. So that's simple. We need to execute this loop 53 times, and then we need to put the rest in a second loop, which also sets those uh, vertical start and stop highest order bit. Uh, so here we go, 53, and we copy this, and it's all pretty messy right now, but we'll clean that up. So, uh, we got 11 left, and we need to, you can fix these labels up when you're done, but I think it's more important to keep things in your head and make it work, and then you can, you can clean up. Premature code cleaning is the root of all evil. Anyway, um, so these um, are below line f hex ff, and uh, what's different here? Well, we want the fourth byte to be set. So before we we don't want to skip five bytes here, we want to skip four bytes because we want to set uh, a constant value here. Because the sprites are only one pixel high, uh, then of course one, as soon as you pass to rest line hex 100, um, both the start and stop bit will be on the high order bit side of hex 100. Both will simply be higher than hex ff and so both the start and end bits will be set. This corresponds to uh, binary uh, six, like that. So if you want, you, you can type it out like this in binary. Let's do that. Uh, and we'll simply do a move byte of that. And we could that put that, uh, be efficient, and um, put that in a uh, data register. Uh, we'll call it, I don't know, D6. Um, so there you go, and um, we skip four bytes. So these following uh, steps will have to look the same. So before we do this, we put that in D6, and uh, sorry about the noise from the keyboard. Mm, hang on. Uh, I'm working on that. I'm working on a on a better setup. So there you go. That should do us. So what the what this does again is set these two bits and then skip four bytes to the to the next sprite. Um, so that's it. Let's uh, save that and try it. Did not work. Ha! Huh. Of course, we don't need. We need to do half the number of sprites because they are put on every other line. So, two hundred fifty-six divided by four, sure is sixty-four but uh, we're on, only going to fit 128 stars vertically if they're on every other line. So luckily we made the error, I made the error in both places, so um, let's cal cal calculate this over. So what we need to do is calculate 100 minus hex 2c, that's 212, and we have to divide that by 2, which is 106, and check if that is divisible by 4. It is not, so we'll have to do a little bit more work here, but anyway. So that'll be 26 for the first loop. And then we'll have to do two sprites on their own, and then two sprites more, and then finish it off with the rest of the sprites. So a little bit more complex, but still better.
better than putting a lot of shifts and masks um, in, the loop, in, in the loop here. So, we do 26 stars, uh, just, as just as before, and uh, we want to copy the first two to here, like that, and these will be normal as well. So we shouldn't copy them from the lower loop, but from the upper loop. Make sure to grab these top two to continue the chain. Now we've hit the point past hex 100, so we take the bottom two, like that, and this part uses d6, so we set this magical value here. We can also set set it um, before the first loop, but that seems it's better to, to put it here as long as it's initialized. So that also means that the total number is 32. So we've done 26 plus 1 turn of 4 stars. Uh, so we've got only five left here. And that should make it work. And it does. So, again, because we only changed the background color for the floor down there, um, the stars are visible in front of the uh, floor, but behind the scroller. So I kind of like that. It's not entirely correct because um, if you were particular, if I do this for a release, I would mirror, I would copy um, the X positions from the stars uh, above the horizon to below the horizon and mirror them vertically. Uh, so we can certainly do that, just requires another loop after the stars. Uh, but anyway, this is how to, how to fill up the screen with stars. Another problem that we'll address is we'd like to have twice as many stars. And a simple way would be to make another star sprite. Uh, star sprite chain down here, like star sprite uh, 2 and uh, fill that up and that should work fine um, I will leave the stars as they are and do exactly that so copy the whole thing make it Star Sprite 2 or Star Sprite Odd or whatever you want to call it for simplicity. And we should not set. Uh, well, actually, there's a global label here, so X must be set to something. So better set it to something odd. <laughs> Again, the peeking over the microphone. So something like that um, might be might be too too big let's do that um, and that potentially should give us just as random stars for the second chain so let's have a look at the loop again we do too much here what you could do is clean this up a bit by making macros. So this chunk here, the only way in which it differs is the, um, the speed, this line. 
So you could make that a parameter and make macros and the code would be much shorter, just one line per star with the parameter for the, for the speed. So you, so you go like move sprite one or something. Um, but as I said, we do too much. So we'd like to just have uh, this instruction and the skip instruction for jumping to the next sprite in the loop that is executed every frame and just to make it uh, not use too much CPU. So what you can do if you don't care much about the code really is to copy this to copy the whole thing quite a bit of code we've written by now you can copy this to an init code that we call so let's go to our demo label sure enough there's our init and because we're not showing the sprites yet it's just good that they are properly initialized uh, before the copper hits copper triggers. Uh, so let's do this. Initialize sprites. Obviously you could optimize this, remove the movement line there. Uh, there, sorry. But I don't think I'll do that just yet. So we'll keep the full code in the init code, uh, we might get no. We have we have better labels, so let's clean up the labels. So imagination uh, running wild. So sky sky loop sky loop. and floor loop. Uh, so that's a bit better. We uh, should have done it before we copied it, but anyway, sky loop. So that's our manual. Now we're gonna slaughter this. Um, so uh, we want to add to the second byte of the control words. So that's an offset of one. So we'll start there and just add the speed like that. We will not increase um, the address, um, but we will copy this and just add 8. Skip the whole thing. So that's how one star looks. So basically, keep saying basically. So now instead we have 1, 2, 1, 3, right? Let's check that. 3, right. So that's a much tighter loop. So the same applies here. You take the first two stars from the upper loop for the remnant just above the horizon and uh, we fix we skip these for now and we just keep on adding speeds and skipping same distance so one two one three and that's our floor loop and copy the lower two two below line x ff so that should 
theoretically work. Let's test our bullshit theory. Yep. So the work was sort of distributed so that the part of writing to the control words, uh, the parts that didn't change were moved to the init code. Uh, and uh, only uh, the vital instructions were left in the main loop. So that's a good example of of how to think when op optimizing. If you don't need to change it every frame, then do it every other frame, or if you only need to do it once, do it in an initialization routine. Um, so that's us, and now that the um, main loop code is more manageable, we can copy that. You can even make all the all of these lines one macro just to make it more readable. But for now I'll first we need working code, so let's put a divisor there. Um and that's not what I was gonna do, but blah blah blah. There you go, and we'll just put star sprite 2 here, and we'll make this one line down as the start value, and rename the labels all else equal. There is, however, a difference here, and that is that when this odd line loop skips from the previously and the even lines it would skip from hex fe to hex 100 this time it because it's one line lower down it will skip from hex ff to hex 101 so that means that this remnant code between the two loops for the odd lines will look a bit different uh, here we will only pick the first one this will be hex ff, um, and we will have to pick three, the bottom three lines. Sorry, bottom three sprites to put here instead. So theoretically, that should work as long as we don't forget to set the sprite pointer. So. We need to check where we set that. There you go. And all we have to do is well, we could make it easy and and just copy paste this. But well, let's do that because even if I add the distance, well, we're, we are we are updating a, a sort of sequential area inside the copper, right where this is. Let me set a mark. Um, so we have we do have plenty of pointers here. So let's learn some more and go here and. What we want to do is basically make well. We can make it a loop, or just copy this these four instructions and add a distance. Um, let's make a loop. So the distance will be 8 between these, so do that. That will change the destination pointer, increase that by 8 for each loop step. 
and what will change here is the distance between the sprites so what uh, instead of calculating that or something we'll let the, the assembler calculate the distance star like that so whatever the distance is between these two pointers it will it will add it for the next one of the loop so since we do two uh, iterations here we need to decrease this by one because two plus six is eight sprites and that's exactly what we have right here it's one two three four six seven eight and that's those are all the the sprite channels the image can do so all the sprites are correctly initialized so hopefully we will have a twice as dense star field we have a double symbol okay uh, so let's do oh I thought that was a one let's do this It doesn't look it. it. Looks the same as before. So let's. Oh, I accidentally. The menu bar. So let's check what could be wrong. The sprite pointers could be wrong. So the last six should be the same, but that's not the case because we used the wrong start pointer. We forgot when we decreased. Uh, the number of remaining sprites to fill with pointers to null, null sprite we forgot to um, increase the address or did we it seems that we skip a little bit too much we should post increment instead because we post incremented there so let's go through this uh, just so it's clear um, we start at SPRP. So after one loop here, the pointer will be SPRP plus 8, pointing to the second sprite. And after two iterations, it will already have increased A1 to sprite to the third sprite, basically. Depends on whether you want to number them from 0 or and up or 1 and up. Um, so that means that because we made this a loop, we were already at the third sprite, so that when we pre-incremented the address here, and that was a code remnant from when we didn't have it as a loop up here, then it would skip the it would skip setting the pointer for the third sprite entirely. So now it should be all right. It still doesn't look it, so let's check the sprite pointers again. And those are just not set. What the hell? Did we skip this part? Ah, I got it. We update the wrong pointer here. Uh, we can't use uh, Lia because we've taken the pointer and put it in D1. For those who saw it, you have better eyes than I. Anyway, um, so what we want to do is um, add L this value to D1 instead, because now we skipped a great distance, and I was just lucky that I didn't uh, didn't. Uh, uh, cause a crash or something because it might have gone out into the memory but I think um, the data statements at the end of the demo provided a buffer and we still don't have twice as twice as many stars so let's check what the problem is now then we do seem to have two correct sprite pointers there and that really should be enough for it to be twice as many stars
but I don't see it. So possibly Star Sprite 2 could be incorrect. Well, they all have the same vertical start position, which is X2C, so that's a clue. So what's missing here? Well, we have totally forgotten to initialize the sprites because we moved that code to the initialization routine. So we'll just do the same procedure here. There you go. And this time, there might be a little less to change. Let's see here, we, st we still have to think about um, line hex 100. So, renaming the labels. You could put a uh, global label uh, in between them and and not have to change them, but uh, I prefer to have local labels inside subroutines. And so that's the first move, and now we only have to think about line hex ff. So if you remember, there should be one above the uh, above x100 uh, and 3 below so we can grab this and set that there and that should do us so now then will we be rewarded with a dense star field there you go okay so we have a problem if you saw that with the stars below line hex ff so again have a look at the star star sprite 2 this time uh, and check the vertical values as they increase here so it goes it sets the bits one position too early So that means that our loops will be simpler for for um, for um, for the odd line sprites. So what's needed then is well uh, we actually need as I said it will jump from hex ff to hex 101. The only problem we have is that it sets um, sets the um, high order bits one position too soon. So what that means is we should actually have the same stuff in the middle between the two loops for star sprite 2. That is uh, two of them before line x100 and two below. So we need to change this both in the initialization code. There you go. And the only thing that differs is the speed, which is two for the second sprite. So let's do it properly because there's less of a risk of a mistake this way 
should be here. Um, this should go away. Um, looking at the main loop code. Again, sky loop two. And right here should be the second star. And one of these should be removed. So now it should be hunky dory. And we should have you can oh we've got a bug. That's interesting. And that's probably from could be from a missing end control word. It's just about where line hex 100 is. So let's have a look at the start card again. Just be zen about it. So I see here that it is indeed setting start and stop positions, but obviously this ends, the start position is correct, but it ends on line x100, so a little bit more complicated there. So now we need to know which bit should be set. We shouldn't use the value 6, we should use some other value, and that value is 2, right, for the end high order bit. So let's go back to the main loop. And this final one here. Uh, well, for the main loop, we don't have to do anything. But for the init code, here this last one should have this kind of a code. In other words, we should replace this with a move and decrease the skip distance by one, but we should not move the value six here, um, but the value two. And this is outside the loop, so, and it, besides it's in the initialization code, so performance doesn't matter as much. And potentially that should do us. Third time's a charm. Yep. So, of course you could keep adding channels all the way up to eight sprites like this. But never go full Starfield or something. Have a good time. And see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.